Well, the federal government also announced two new immigration streams for Ukrainians fleeing the war and hoping to come to Canada. Sean Fraser is Canada's Minister of Immigration. He joins me now. Uh, Minister Fraser, good to see you. And uh, I, I hear you're bouncing back from uh, COVID-19, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that as well. And thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Tell me about these two Look, new immigration. Pleasure to be with you. Okay, tell me about these two new immigration streams. What are you doing for Ukrainians who want to come to Canada to escape the war? Uh, so look, today's announcement is is a, a major step in the right direction. It's going to help Ukrainians reach Canada in the fastest possible way, and, and also ensures that it's it's efficient and safe. Uh, so if I can cut to the chase, uh, we've created a new program that's going to allow people to come here by filing a simple application and going through a uh, expedited security screening process for onward travel to Canada. The advantage to the program we've set up is that there's no limit to the number of applications that it can accept. And we've also heard from the Ukrainian-Canadian community that a lot of the people who are seeking to find refuge somewhere don't intend to, to, uh, to stay permanently. They want to go home. But there are some who have family in Canada that will want to stay. So the second pathway is a pathway to permanent residency that's going to involve family sponsorship. And that came from a suggestion through the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress, who we're working with every step of the way to do everything we can to support them in their time of need. Uh, how many Ukrainians do you expect will, will want to come here on that temporary basis? You're, you're setting no limits, uh, but do you have some idea of what that number might be? It's a demand-driven system that we've built, and we don't know what the actual number is going to be because there's a lot of people who are fleeing Ukraine who are entitled to uh, move about throughout Europe. So it's difficult to predict. Uh, what we've done to respond to the potential uncertainty and numbers that we expect uh, could could result uh, is leverage the, the same tools that are used for uh, a tourist visa, for example, uh, when we want to be able to scale up when there's more demand because in normal times, that's a good thing for our economy. Uh, so we pulled some Something off the shelf, but we've uh, taken away all of the barriers that would usually limit a person's ability to be uh, admissible to Canada to ensure that we welcome as many as possible, as quick as possible. So we've built flexibility into the system to uh, respond to whatever demand we could possibly see. How quickly will your department be able to bring these people to Canada? I, I think I heard you say at your news conference today that the new system uh, won't be up and running for, for uh, two more weeks. So how quickly is this going to happen? Uh, so let me just clarify, the new system will be available, uh, we estimate, in 14 days, but we are expediting applications now, and we started on January 19th, went through our entire inventory on every line of business to identify every single file that's attached to a Ukrainian national. Since the beginning of January, there's actually more than 6,100 Ukrainians who have already arrived in Canada. And we expect to continue to see that expedited application process apply for people over the next two weeks while we wait for the new uh, streamlined system to come online as well. Well, so if, if it's 6,000 since the beginning of January, um, and, and given where the crisis is now in Ukraine, one might reasonably anticipate that uh, we could be looking at numbers in the tens of thousands, no? It certainly could be in the tens of thousands. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, but because we're admitting people on a temporary basis and giving them open work permits, these are people who are going to be able to come here and work to support themselves. Uh, but they're also um, not the same uh, uh, stresses on our, our systems that we deal with when we're admitting new permanent residents who intend to be here for uh, potentially the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique circumstance and it d demands a really unique response. Sixty other countries have dropped the visa requirements for people fleeing Ukraine, but uh, you're maintaining that visa requirement that will require them to provide uh, biometrics for security purposes and go through a background uh, screening check. Why are you maintaining that? There's two uh, reasons, essentially, why we've decided to do that. And that was actually one of the first things that I considered because my main interest is getting people here as quickly as possible. When I dug in on what a visa waiver would actually require, I discovered pretty quickly that it would demand a regulatory change and also certain renovations to our IT systems for both the Government of Canada and potentially for airlines as well. And the estimated time to complete those changes was between 12 and 14 weeks. And in my view, we don't have 12 to 14 weeks. We have to move as quickly as possible. But on the biometrics issue, it's important to recognize that over the past eight years, there have been uh, pro-Russian forces in uh, eastern Ukraine and the Donbass that have been fighting. And we want to ensure that the security screening process, when we're welcoming potentially significant numbers of people, uh, gives Canadians peace of mind.
find that we've done a basic diligence to ensure that the people who arrive in Canada uh, are not going to compromise our security interests. So we have heard lots of stories of Canadians uh, of, of Ukrainian descent, but many others as well, uh, who are uh, quickly stepping up here to say they'll open their homes to uh, Ukrainians who uh, flee the war. Uh, look, even your mom, I understand, wants to help. Uh, what are you hearing? Yeah, mom said she'd take six. And look, that just characterizes the outpouring of support um, that has made me really proud to be Canadian over the last uh, number of weeks. Um, we've heard from businesses, we've heard from organizations, we've heard from settlement service providers, we've heard from nonprofit organizations, we've heard from other MPs who are saying the same thing about their parents and their neighbors wanting to take people. It's been extraordinary to see this outpouring of support. And it really communicates to me that Canadians appreciate uh, and don't take for granted the fact that we live in a free country, the fact that we get to enjoy democracy, and to see a, a permanent member of the Security Council um, launch a war of aggression, uh, completely unnecessary and an unreasonably costly war, both in, in financial and human terms, um, is the kind of thing that have inspired Canadians to do the right thing, mm. to welcome the world's most vulnerable, uh, and, and to make uh, sure that our reputation as a welcoming place uh, is maintained uh, as we respond to this crisis. All right, so uh, your mom knows how to get right to the top, so she contacted you directly to, with, with an offer of help. <laughs> For people watching, uh, I mean, is there an organized way that people who want to be part of this, who do they contact if they're, if they're prepared to take people in? So we're working right now uh, through a number of different channels. I've had a number of very productive conversations with provincial governments who will uh, presumably be uh, contributing to this sort of organization. The Ukrainian Canadian Congress wants to play a role. And there's other different organizations, including within the federal government through ESDC, that's looking at coordinating some kind of a response for employers who are looking to hire Ukrainians because they'll be given open work permits. We have a little bit more work left to do to make sure that we streamline the uh, the, the settlement process, uh, the job supports uh, to make sure that we don't just get people here, but they are set up for success when they arrive. And uh, I imagine we'll have more to say on that in the weeks ahead as we start to see large numbers arriving in, uh, across our borders. All right. So stay tuned. Uh, Canada's Immigration Minister, Sean Fraser. Uh, good to speak to you, Minister. Thanks for your time tonight. A pleasure as always. Thank you so much.